when I was diagnosed at age 45 with terminal cancer. And the doctor said, you have three to six months to live unless we do some more surgery. We do aggressive chemo, radiation, throw, throw everything at you. <coughs> Is it working? Okay, closer. I had heard Dale's story by then. <laughs> I knew what he had experienced. I knew God. God was real to me. And Dale was a great testimony to build my faith. I thought if God did that for him, he'll do that for me. Because he's no respecter of persons. He loves everyone the same. He doesn't play favorites. And even though we're all different and we have different journeys, we all face something that will challenge us. Cancer was mine. I knew God was my healer and my answer. I knew that. Thank the Lord. So I got my Bible and I stayed there for days until the God gave me a verse that I knew was for me. It's like it jumped off the page at me and it said, this is for you. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. I'll not tempt you beyond that which you're able to endure without making a way of escape. I give my testimony, but I've been listening to him. <laughs> so I knew he had a way of escape for me, but I didn't know what it was, but I knew there was a way of escape. And I'm going to make this super short. You're just going to have to read the book if you want the whole story, because I'm not going to spend too much more time on this. I got this scripture. I'm looking. Where's my way of escape, Lord? Where's my way of escape? I know you're going to give it to me because you are my answer man. You are the guy I'm going to. I am trusting you above everything in this world because this world belongs to Satan. And your kingdom is where healing is. In your kingdom is healing. In your kingdom is deliverance. In your kingdom is provision. In your kingdom. And that's where I'm a citizen. That's where I belong. That's what I'm going to take from. Your kingdom, not this world. So I trusted him, and he supernaturally, amazingly orchestrated things to bring me to a woman doctor who had had cancer a year before I had, who had found the Lord when she was faced with cancer. And she, as a doctor, said, I'm not going to the hospital. They'll kill me. I'm going to God. He's going to save me. She nearly died, but then slowly it turned. She tried this and she found this and found this and did all this work. And God brought me to her to reap from what she had already. We stand on the shoulders of others. We do. It's not a single, we're not on a solitary journey. We overcome Satan by the word of our testimony and the blood of the lamb. Uh, God has provided a way for us to gain wisdom, strength, and endurance through the testimony of others. You've heard an incredible testimony with Dale today. That's going to build your faith. But we each need our own faith for our own journey. It has to be very personal. It can't be someone else's faith. It has to be our faith. And so I learned from this woman, and she directed me, and I knew this was the way of escape God had for me. So I started doing everything she told me to do. Well, that was for my body. That's only part of me. Spirit, soul, body. I'm a three-part person. God said you need to deal with all three. Your spirit, soul, and body have to work together on this journey to overcome. So I began to build my spirit, build my faith. I wrote out three pages of scriptures on healing, on God's promises. He said it. I took it. And I'm not kidding you. The biggest challenge I had with cancer was fear. Every day I felt like I'd get hit by a Mack truck. I never knew when it was going to hit. I never knew what was. Someone would tell me a story. Someone would tell me a report. The doctor would tell me how bad it was, what I needed to do, and I wasn't going to do that. So fear was constantly haunting me. And every time fear would rise up or a new symptom would show up, a circumstance would change. I pulled out my three pages. And out loud, I would read every single scripture, every promise. And by the time I finished, you couldn't find fear. It was gone. Faith was there. Because that's what God's word does to us. 
when we plant, it's supernatural. It's not logical. It's supernatural. The word of God planted in us, mixed with the spirit of Christ, becomes faith. It does things we can't do without. Because of that faith, I walked through the journey of cancer, always hearing Satan come every day, tell me, but you didn't do what the doctor said. Three to six months, three to six months, you're going to be dead by Christmas. Oh, what's that new pain you're feeling? Oh, what's that new symptom you're having? It's spreading. Satan comes with lies. He comes with facts and stats. He comes with reports that are negative. He comes with fear, doubt, and unbelief. Get out my scriptures. Read them out loud. God is true. His word is living. When we put living food in our spirit, it overcomes the fear in our mind, the fear in our emotions. Our soul is made up of our mind, will, and emotions. That's the soulish realm. That's where Satan attacks. He comes there because he's not allowed to touch our spirit when we're born again. He comes to the soul. And the only power he has is if we'll agree with him. If we agree, oh, yeah, it's true, I have this new sin. Oh, it's probably spread. It's probably spread. Okay, now I'm agreeing with the liar. Instead of agreeing with what God has said, his word, like Dale said, it, it will never pass away. This world we think is so real. These doctors, this medical system, these diseases, these circumstances, these accidents, we think they're so real. They're going to pass away. God's word doesn't pass away. It's eternal. We can live on it, stand on it, walk on it, run on it. If we change, like Dale said, you said so many things. that Because God doesn't change. He's the same whether it's an accident. He's the same whether it's a disease. He's the same whether it's a lost job. It's the same. How many stories do we have? We have babies that were born that shouldn't have been. We have marriages that were saved that shouldn't have been. Ours included. We have so many testimonies. They're endless. They're endless. There's hundreds. And we were part of them because God was part of them. We were following God and God showed up because we trusted him to be more real than the circumstances of this world. Satan is running this world. This is his domain temporarily. We're living in his kingdom down here temporarily, but the kingdom of heaven is living in us who have received Jesus Christ. So we're carrying around a piece of heaven everywhere we go. Now it's up to us to make sure that heaven dominates through us in our life and our circumstances. Not this world can't dictate. We can't let this world dictate our future. We can't let it dictate our success. We can't let it dictate our victory. Jesus is always for victory. He said victory is yours. Victory is yours if you trust in me. You know, these scriptures that we pull out of the promise box, and we talk about a lot. We, we read this promise, oh, isn't that great? Isn't it? They're like little cliches, spiritual cliches. Drives me nuts. I, I even listened to the words in the songs. I loved your words in the songs. It, it was, they were wonderful. And I, with, with so many of them, I thought of a testimony. I thought of the truth, the power of that. That's true. But do they understand this? It's not just about saying things. It's about believing things. It's about knowing something. How do you trust someone you don't know? If you don't know God, how do you trust him? Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, all, all your ways, in all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. We don't always see where the path's going to go. I only saw a foot in front of me, one step at a time. I couldn't see where I was going, but I knew it was going to victory. I knew that. I knew that he had said, victory is yours because you're trusting me. I guarantee you the victory. But I don't know what today holds. Oh my gosh, I got to take another step. Okay, he's lighting that spot right there. That's in agreement uh, with him. I'm going to do that. Every day there were decisions, choices. Every choice mattered. Every choice you make matters. That's one of the beautiful privileges God gave us, free will. 
will to choose. I've set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Therefore, choose life. You get to choose. I'm telling you which way to choose, but you still have to make the choice. I won't do it for you. You have to choose me. You have to choose my life. You have to choose heaven's way. You have to choose. Every day we make thousands of choices. Are they the right ones? Because they have an ending. They have a destination. Every choice takes us in a direction. And they put someone in charge. We put God in charge. Or we put Satan in charge. Or we put ourselves in charge. So I learned through cancer, God is my healer. I trusted that from the beginning. I believed in him and I trusted him every day until I had 18 months later, there's no cancer in your body. The doctors couldn't believe I would never go back, never did. I went and sat in a chemo chair. I, had, I was getting started on everything until God directed me, no, go my way, trust me. And I'm not going to tell anybody what they need to do. You have to decide between you and God what you're going to do with your situation. You choose. If God's not going to force you to choose, I'm sure not. You choose. You know, one of the things that happened to me with cancer, and I'll end with this. Even with Dale's wonderful testimony that I knew, I knew that I had to choose to make God's kingdom more real than this world I was living in. And I had to be willing to die for what I was choosing because it made no sense when I had cancer. Everyone said, what are you doing? Why are you not going back to the doctor? Why are you not doing what the doctor said? Because God's leading me this way and I'm betting my life on it. I never went back to the doctor. I threw away his letters without, unopened that come back, come back. I had made a choice. Now the challenge, after making the choice, was walking through that choice. Day in, day out, day in, day out, with the pressures every day that Satan brought. The enemy's working, he's working to get us to agree with him. I wouldn't agree with him. I was tempted to, but I pulled out the scriptures and I read them out loud every time, every day, all the way through, three pages, sometimes many times a day, because that's when fear hit. Whenever fear hit, that told me, read the word, build your faith. And I walked through that by keeping my faith intact with God's word. That's why I won. That's why I had victory. It was not anything I did, it was what God did through me, because I just kept agreeing with him. I agree with you. I agree with you. I agree with this. You said it. I agree with it. I chose 100,000 times through that journey to agree with God. And Satan gave me a choice every single day. That's why I won, because I agreed with God. This is my testimony, but it's his glory because it's all his plan. He provided the way of escape. I just walked in it. I just kept choosing to walk in it. So you can walk in it too in whatever way of escape you are given because God always has a way of escape. In every situation, there is nothing too hard for him. The Bible says that. He said that. It'll last forever. There's nothing too hard for him. There's nothing more real than God and Satan. They are real. This world, it's not even real. It's just our environment. It's like a virtual reality right now. Heaven is real. We're headed there. And don't miss it because it is the coolest, most wonderful, most perfect place because God is there. And it's, it's like what Dale said. It's all about love. He loves you. He created you. He knows you like nobody knows you. Nobody will ever know you. You want to be known by someone, cared about, valued, have worth to someone? That's God. He created you like you are for a purpose that is greater than you are. A purpose that's his purpose. It's an eternal plan. We're all part of that. He's preparing us now for what's to come. This isn't the end. This is only the beginning. This is the starting point where we make the choices that determine how much we get to enjoy the next world, the reality. 
He has an eternal purpose. We don't sit on clouds and play harps when we get to heaven. Uh, as fun as that may be for some who play music, uh, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't ring my bell. But <laughs> um, there are incredible things in heaven waiting for us. Eternity is incredible. It is where we're, what we're created for. Uh, and it, it's where we're going. And I think that more than anything, no one ever has arrived where they need to be spiritually. We need to understand that. Even if we've accepted Jesus, which is our starting point, it's like starting a race. Okay, the starting gun goes off, you take off from the, from the blocks there, and you're, you're now running. Okay, you got born again. Praise the Lord, you're in the race. You're in the race. That's all. You got to keep running to win. You got to keep running to even finish. That is how the Bible describes our walk with the Lord, our life of Jesus, running a race. Wherever you are in the race, you can always come up with a little more energy, a little more pressure, a little more going to do better, going to go faster. That guy's catching up with me. I'm going to run a little harder. That's where we all are. We're all somewhere in our race right now. Today, there's not one person in here that can't say, it's time to do more. It's time to step up the game. It's time to put out a little more energy. It's time to get a little more focused. It's time, because times are getting more difficult. They're getting more complicated. They're getting more evil. And we want to win. We want to make it through. We want to get to the light. We want to make it all the way through to the finish line where God can say, well done, good and faithful servant. Yeah. Well done. So let's just pray for people today, whatever you need, whatever it is you're struggling with. There's victory. It's for you. God's no respecter of persons. He doesn't give Dale victory and me victory and not someone else victory. He gives everybody victory if they will hold on to him and not let go. If they will know that he's the reason they're going to have victory and they're going to let him help them walk through that walk to that victory. So whether you are struggling physically emotionally, whether you're struggling with uh, Jesus, just letting go and letting him, uh, instead of trying to run the world on your own, let him guide you and walk with you. He'll never leave you or forsake you. So just those of you that want to take a step deeper, that want to commit further, that want more of God in your life, that want to see heaven as more real and eternity and the kingdom of God that's in you more real than this world, let's pray.